Hello there, and welcome to my Muldrow Plus Zomboid run. This is my survivor, a firefighter named Darren. He's a man who enjoys the tranquility of gardening and the excitement of making new friends. For this run, I set the population to 4x and added a bunch of vanilla friendly mods, minus the KI-5 vehicles, which are just too cool to do without. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. I was fortunate enough to spawn in Southern Muldrow, but it was an all-around lucky start because even though I was playing insanely rare loot, I found a car with the keys, a generator, and the magazine off spawn. And though I spent most of the first day fighting, the pop wasn't as bad as it should have been playing 4X, because the Zeds largely decided to break down the fences and wandered off. My second day was entirely spent gaining access to the gas station in order to fuel up a Volvo outside the rusty rifle, only to brick it by running over a mailbox like two days later. And the rest of the first five days pretty much consisted of nothing but fighting. I was kind of lucky again because the Zomboids were dropping me weapons, like machetes. Without that, the first week frankly might not have gone so well. My whip situation was pretty good, considering it was the first week of the apocalypse. But my food situation was a little desperate. I was apparently cooking soup with beer. So I decided to visit the little grocery store to the north for any other high quality soup ingredients that they might have. And then I figured I might as well rob the Portman Medical Center while I was at it. Later that night I looted the industrial warehouses to the south, but Rather than sorting my loot when I got home, I just left it on the floor, a time-honored zomboy tradition. Then I planted the carrot seeds I was lucky enough to find in the warehouses. It wasn't quite food security, but it was a start. The next thing to do now was to establish cigarette security. So I went straight to the source, the ratty little office buildings in the industrial park. You just know that all the homies unlucky enough to be working there can't get through the day without the aid of their nicotine sticks. As it turned out, the greedy bastards had actually smoked most of their cancer tubes, but at least they left behind plenty of magazines, including the post-apocalyptic Knights question marks edition, which meant I could craft leg pouches when I hit tailoring level 2. This is probably the most important thing to me in any Zomboid run. The only thing that I can't live without during the apocalypse is my leg pouches. And I almost just died, but I'll be damned if I didn't look good doing it. I spent day 9 trying to get to the strip mall off the highway, but I was pushed back several times by the Zeds. They really wanted to keep me from expanding my horizons. Despite their backwards, anti-knowledge, neo-Luddite designs, they got into the bookstore in the end. On day 10, I found my way into the police station, but it was practically empty. Which wasn't unexpected, seeing as loot was insanely rare and it was Muldrow after all. But it's always a little depressing to loot a police station and come up empty. Next, I purchased some videotapes, borrowed a painting from the restaurant, and politely asked some passerby for directions to Louisville. I spent the next couple of days reading and closing the gaps in my fence because I knew that at some point a horde would push down on me. And in fact, a horde did push down on me that very day and I had a near miss with a Zomboid that was apparently a track star in his former life. Thankfully, the Zomboid didn't get my killing on him, but it would take the whole evening to clear the horde anyways. By day 13, I was beginning to really worry about food, 
I was low in general, but if I didn't find some fat boy food and soon, I would fall below weight, which wouldn't be good. But I was not able to do anything about it today because the Jamooks that had been so conspicuously missing from the neighborhood were coming back in droves. Oh my god, there's so many! Here, go home, fuck it, go home. Blow the whole town up. You nuke it, it's over. They pushed me to the wall, literally of my own yard, and things were hairy for a moment. I was able to defeat them in the end, but the experience drove home the need to continue improving my base defenses. Like I said before, the food situation was getting desperate, so I decided to take a gamble and drove out to the Greens food store off of the highway. But seeing as there were zombies absolutely oh, everywhere, I, like I fled, and was relegated to scrounging places I had already cleared. I was fortunate enough to find some food stuff in the trailer park and elsewhere that would sustain me for the time being. Afterward, I continued improving my base defenses. The next few days I devoted to developing my skills, picking shit up off the floor, and eating like there was no tomorrow. Then, of course, there was the combat. I know I haven't shown that much combat, but these first few weeks were really combat heavy. And so it went, for days and days, and I was often drenched in a sweat, so I fought without the protection of clothes and armor. And I was often pushed out of locations by the weight of their numbers, and my inability to kill them quickly, against my fatigue and lack of more deadly weapons. But on day 19, I finally gained access to the Midtown Storage and Warehouse. And I found some more food crops, so I was somewhat on my way to food security. Nice. And occasionally the monotony of the endless combat was broken up by my enlightening conversations with a mysterious, disembodied voice inside my head known as the ring of... Hey, cat? Right, um, this is a crowbar. My bad. I have a pickaxe at home. We have pickaxe at home. Yeah. Pickaxes are actually good because they are count as an axe and my character is good with axes. Oh, alright. It makes sense that it's called a pickaxe. So. Pickaxe? That's also what it does. Is that the joke you were going for? Yeah. I was being serious. <laughs> I always pick ass. Over tits. No, 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 no. You get a die on the hill you first said. No, you don't, no, you don't get a backtrack. What do you mean? We'll set it you up like for that the whole time. Ass, there you go. Yeah, everyone loves ass. Tell me you don't. I think there's like. Why do you get a pick ass? Whose ass are you gonna pick? The fairest of them all. <laughs> mirror, really? Mirror. Rachel, fuck ass? Uh, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest ass of them all? If you ask Disney, it's that Rachel girl. Rachel Levine, maybe. No. It's the one that kind of has too wide of a face. Ugh. 
Have you not seen her? I think I have, but I forgot her as soon as I did. <laughs> You're evil. You can't fuck a zombie. I mean, you literally cannot. I know they're technically I mean, dead, so you don't have to worry about, like, procreating. Or consent. Yeah, you don't have to Think worry about, about it either, no, but no, I still feel like... No need for an abortion. <sighs> I still don't think it's worth it. You could fuck a corpse with Bro. all those same things. Bro, I agree it's not worth it. Um, <laughs> on day 20, I made the long overdue trip to church. And because it was so unbearably hot out, I was reduced to fighting in a speedo. Forgive me, Jesus. The files for days 21, 22, and 23 are lost to corruption. So who the hell even knows what happened? Actually, I'm pretty sure I made my way to the school through heavy fighting and scored some more books, but there's no record of that. Then on day 24, through the magic of mods, my sports car turned into a mail truck, and the weather turned to shit as I fought my way uptown for a slice of rotten pizza. And I must have been expecting company because I cleaned my house halfway decent and made an ass fuck ton of spears. By day 25, I had made my way as far as Muldrow's infamous crack shack, and wasn't surprised to find a beaten up Pontiac Trans Am in the parking lot. For day 26, the storm horde did finally come, and my file was lost to an IRL power outage. Bad timing. Anyways, the fighting took several days, so it doesn't really matter. There was actually a lull to the fighting on the second day, where I thought I had defeated the Storm Lord, but they really just had trouble navigating to my location. Anyways, in that interim period I rebuilt some of my defenses, and ended up fighting the Remnants the following day. By day 28, it was clear that the Zeds had decided to ground me for indecent behaviors, and they would barely let me out of the house, so I fully spent the next two days in open rebellion. Alright, now I'm gonna walk down the street, yelling, see what happens. Here, walk down the street, and get mugged. <laughs> Welcome to Chicago. Dude, when I first noticed the horde forming, look, yeah. What the fuck? Oh my god, it's not over the war with the ceasefire was a lie! It's... Israel will never accept, sorry, Palestine will never accept the Israel state. <laughs> they will never accept the two state solution. <laughs> Need to be able to kill a lot of them in this. Damn it. God damn it. 
They broke through already. Problem is, so many of them come through it that uh, it's like the character starts swinging at the wrong shit. Like that. What the fuck? Swing until everything ends. That's my motto. Doesn't always work. Okay. Alright, plan B. Oh no, don't you ever fucking do that again. Oh fuck, Swinter. Yep, use the hedge, use the hedge. Okay, okay. Okay, we're cooking, we're cooking. Just don't let it burn. All right, we're resting on this. Because we're getting a little bit mildly exhausted. I'm like effectively trapped in my base. Okay. No, I'll be able to kill all of them, I think, with enough time. The following morning, I woke up to the sounds of the police firing on the enemy, so I decided to join in. I have to say, these little fence traps work really well, as you'll see. One final push, and I should be free. Back up, Streetwalker. You got time for your rotten click. My god, it's working. <laughs> it's because they're confused. Goodbye, Storm Lord. For the first time in four days, my restriction was lifted, and I was finally permitted to leave the neighborhood. But honestly, that wasn't such a good thing, because I only wound up getting myself into more trouble. Simply put, I would bite off more than I could chew. The thing is, every time I kill a storm horde, I have this feeling like the area must be clear now, and I wind up pushing with a touch of overconfidence into areas that turn out not to be clear at all. I, I, I can feel the blood creeping up from the heathens. Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason. If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gonna feed them. If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon. I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing. Take me for granted, and you know I'm leaving. I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving. I could take this crap from seeing to believe. Got a taste for blood and my tongue keeps bleeding From the words I spit, so sharp, so freezing So cold, behold, frostbite, they feeling I could tear you apart or I could go heal them Don't believe in fate, don't believe in ceilings I just need a taste and my mind starts feeling I don't pace myself, I grind on no kneeling Got lust for change, I just love the feeling, uh.
but I ain't gonna give up Got too little time, I'ma live up Head down, push forward through the tough times Cause anything worth doing is a tough climb And I ain't gonna give up Got too little time, I'ma live up Head down, push forward through the tough times Cause anything worth doing is a tough Cause climb Cause I'm a live life for the fight Yeah, I'm here to get it I got drive, got sight Always have a vision I go by at night I be in my feelings I'ma be fine, need time And I'll soon be winning I live life for the fight Yeah, I'm here to get it I got drive, got sight Always have a vision I go by at night I be in my feelings I'ma be fine, need time I can feel the blood creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gon' feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon I can feel the blood creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gon' feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon Hey, 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 I'm gonna restart my computer because this shit is lagging. Because my computer had started chugging so bad, I took the opportunity to shut it down and resume the fight later. But when I did, I forgot to start recording until the next day. So here we are. Let me just say that as it got late that night, the fighting got scarier and more dangerous. I was forced to flee back to base, leaving the mail truck behind. And if I'm being honest, I was a little shook by how sketch things were outside of the neighborhood, so I decided to take it easy the following day. But the day after that, it was time to get back on that horse, so I borrowed the neighbor's whip and headed to Midtown. Now, Midtown wasn't exactly free for the taking, but there was booze there, and booze is a must-have during the apocalypse. It quenches your thirst, makes you happy, numbs the pain, and can even put you to sleep, among other things. It's the Swiss Army knife of post-apocalyptic beverages. After securing my booze collection, however, I was obligated to fight the remaining Zeds in the area for the rest of the night. In truth, I put off retrieving the mail truck for three whole days, but by day 31 it was time to stop fucking around, so I grabbed a couple spears and went out to get my revenge.
revenge was complete, so I returned home with the mail truck. But while I was out, I happened to finally find a jack, and now I could properly train mechanics. So I spent day 34 taking apart the bourbon truck that had been sitting in the front yard. The next day, I decided I would finish off the used store's eggs, the ones that were getting a little weird with the fence, before stealing a Ford Taurus hatchback. So I could feel like I was really in the 90s. But that wasn't good enough for me. So I decided to bring back the busted up Trans Am and leave it in my driveway. So I could feel like I was in the 70s instead. On day 37 I continued working my way up the highway. And once again found an excuse to fight in my speedo. Fuck it, it was 100 degrees out. The next day was more of a chill homey vibes day. I killed some trees, did some chores, and relooted areas I had already been to. On day 39, I finally dug some graves for the homies. Every post-apocalyptic crib needs some graves. Then I moved the yellow piece of shit off the Trans Am piece of shit, which had apparently been mounted overnight by the yellow piece of shit in some sort of bizarre mechanical crossover with National Geographic's Majesty of the Animal Kingdom or some shit. Anyways, Day 40 was another chill homey vibes day dedicated to eating, reading, watching TV, and other skills related activities. Turns out I was feeling hungry on day 41, so I spent some time assaulting the spliffos, the Jay's chicken, and the pile of crepes. And because it was raining a lot, I tried to fight indoors as much as I could. This was really a significant day for fighting but we've had enough combat lately. Day 42 took a turn for the spicy when I mistakenly believed I was safe to loot the neighborhood north of the Midtown Church, only to have a bunch of Zeds come out of the woodwork and send me fleeing for my life. I ended up running all the way back to the Midtown U store it, where I had left the neighbor's car and drove that home. It's always good to have extra escape vehicles laying around town. Like the other days following near misses, I took the following day off in order to recenter myself or something like that. On 
day 44, I fought my way back to the Ford Taurus, which turned out to be an all-day event, of course. By about midnight, the Taurus was once again in my possession, so I headed home. On day 45, I began a more systematic approach to clearing Muldrow, going house to house, taking what I could, and then making little notations on my map. Eventually I made it up to the trailer park, which was deceptively empty. Now the trailer park is usually pretty full of Zeds. But I think the reason it was relatively abandoned was because the wandering zombies and the calm before the storm mods were pulling the zeds out of the area in order to form the hordes that came after me elsewhere. Now, the residential looting, which I'm usually not too big on because the loot isn't typically that useful after the start and also requires you to go into confined spaces, which is always dangerous, actually yielded some good results in the form of boxes of shotgun shells. Fucking finally. Up until now, I had mostly been nickel and diming my way to shotgun shells, finding 10 on a body here, or four to five, and a shotgun dropped by a Zed there. But with what I found, I was actually able to get aggressive with guns for once. After another long day of fighting up the highway, I decided to spend the night in the used store in North Muldrow. I simply love sleeping in garages in Project Zomboid. It just feels right to sleep in a garage during the apocalypse. On day 47, another finally came in the form of a propane torch. God damn, I don't think I've ever been bottlenecked so long by a propane torch. I took home that propane torch, a park ranger jeep, and the commercial van loaded with goodies. And afterwards I celebrated with a nice victory bath. At this point, I hadn't quite conquered Muldrow, but I felt as if I had more or less survived it. 
so it was kind of time to chill. I spent the morning of day 48 doing random chill homie chores, like organizing my yard and gardening. Since I was now able to finally practice my metalworking skill, I headed down to the Muldrow pileup and got busy. The next day was lost in reading since I had unlocked the next levels and a few skills. The next day after that was lost in mechanics. And the next couple days after those were lost to more mechanics as I spent some time familiarizing myself with the standardized vehicles mod, which is a really bitchin' mod that allowed me to pimp out the park ranger jeep. On day 53 there was a lengthy power outage, so I decided to set up a generator, which was sitting in a shed only two houses down from me. I decided to place it on the graves of the dead homies, as if by some occult karmic process I could harness their energy. The weather was starting to get pretty nasty, but I decided to spend the rest of the day working on clearing out more of Muldro, which meant a little more going house to house and a little more killing that which is already dead. And I capped off the night with a little more map notating. You probably already know that I can't live without my map notations. I decided to include this little section of the ride home. One, because the Jeep looks so badass, but also because in general, Zomboid looks so good at night, especially with the weather, and also when things are still lit up before the power goes out. Look at that shit, man, it's beautiful. Anyways, I kinda stayed up late that night just looking at my loot, as one sometimes does, and when I finally went to bed I woke up to the announcement of another storm horde. So I got up, took a look around, and bolstered my defenses. I didn't really see anything, and the weather was still kinda shitty. So I decided to go inside and learn how to make homemade silencers, 
while I let the situation develop. Eventually, a small group of Zeds decided to pull a Kool-Aid man and oh yeah, their way through my back fence. But that was about it for the night. The following day, I found that the weather had dropped off a few out-of-towners interested in seeing the neighborhood, so I gave them the old-fashioned, newly pimped out guns welcome. The fact that this was about all that showed up to the neighborhood from a storm horde meant my surrounding area was probably pretty well cleared by now. The next afternoon I was surprised when a group of Zeds decided to force their way through my rear fence once again. So after dealing with them for their transgressions, the rest of the day was spent chopping trees killing lurkers, repairing the various holes in the rear, and making a few miscellaneous improvements to the general base defense. After all of that, I somehow blacked out for three whole days of recording, and then I woke up in a garage like one of P. Diddy's party guests. So I did what anyone else would do in that situation, and went on a rampage. My aiming skill was now high enough to make decent use of the M14, so I did. And because I now had some skill in mechanics, I was able to hotwire a police cruiser to aid me in clearing the rest of Muldrow. Before the night was over, I took another trip to church in search of guidance, and the Lord in his wisdom provided me with spare engine parts. I decided to spend the night in the garage once again before attempting to continue the rampage the following day, but there just wasn't too many zomboids around anymore. By the end of the night, I was able to declare the last of the northern Muldrow neighborhoods clear. The next day, which was day 61, I think, I brought home another vehicle to add to the collection. And then I harvested some more crops and sorted some more loot. One of the last things on my Muldrow bucket list was to visit the cabin in the woods. Honestly, I was hoping that they would have shotgun shells, being a cabin in the woods and all, but all I got in the end was an ambush in the woods.
After fighting my way through the ambush, I was ultimately rewarded with no shotgun shells. Thanks for nothing, bucket list. On day 63, I returned from my home away from home and added some flavor to my base strip, most notably the Scarecrow Mannequin. Every post-apocalyptic base needs a mannequin, at the very least, if not several mannequins. Then, it was back to skill work. On day 65, the base improvements continued before heading out to finish clearing the trailer park. There is a little more resistance this time, but the trailer park still wasn't at full strength. The plan for day 66 was to clear the few remaining houses around Midtown that still needed to be crossed off the map. It was about 7 p.m. at night when I rolled into the last couple houses, and this was the very last one. It took 66 days, but we were finally done. It took me 30-something days to find a jack, and 40-something to find a propane torch. I wasn't really able to start using guns until about 50 days in, but by day 66, every location inside of Muldrow was able to be crossed off of the map. All that was left to do now was to take a victory lap, so I brought home the Jeep J10 that I found and began pimping it out. Then I wrote some final, inspiring messages into the neighbor's yard. and I did a little celebratory fishing. I got another trout. Yay. Yeah, baby. Dinner's on the fucking menu tonight. I caught three trout. Ah, Muldrow is my oyster. If you made it this far into the video, I hope you enjoyed it. You might have noticed as the video went on that the editing maybe got a little bit better. I wish I could go back and remix the first part a little more, but I deleted the files to make space on my hard drive. I had this crazy idea for the video of cutting it down to 10 minutes, but that was impossible. Even at 50 minutes long, so much is cut from it. Anyways, I'm working on a part two for my Over the River series, and perhaps I'll be able to achieve a decent edit for the entirety of that video. But if you'd like to see a part two to this one, let me know. Anyways, that's it for now.